Hello, hello, more Dimmers here, and today I would like to show you the game from uh, day four of Magnus Carlsen Invitational uh, Tournament played in 2020 online tournament and so far it's the biggest the most impressive tournament uh, we have 250,000 prize fund and also $70,000 for the first place we have also eight the world's best players which compete online and they play uh, matches between uh, themselves each, each match uh, consists the four 15 uh, minutes uh, games plus 10 seconds incrementation so uh, if there is a draw in this uh, you know match uh, then we have Armageddon game which decides who's gonna be the winner and if the player managed to win without Armageddon get three points in Armageddon two points and loser in Armageddon get one point so that's the rules also the players uh, cannot offer a draw uh, before move 40 and today i would like to show you the game between ding liren uh, number one player in china and number three in the world his ranking in standard chess uh, format uh, 2791 uh, he just lost uh, some points in the candidates tournament where he definitely uh, couldn't concentrate properly and he lost a couple of games uh, but in rapid uh, he's ranking 2836 pretty strong player and he's 27 years old and in the game I choose, uh, he's gonna play as white. And his opponent, Fabiano Caruana, American-Italian player, uh, who's ranking in standard chess 2835. He's number two in the world. However, uh, in rapid, uh, he's slightly... Uh, weaker let's say weaker and he's still extremely strong player 2773 this is his rapid ranking he is also 27 years old and in this match it was a draw so we had the two draws one game won by Caruana one game won by Ding Liren and uh, Caruana won Armageddon got two points and Ding Liren got one point and I'm not gonna tell you which game I choose to make the things more interesting so without further ado let's jump into the game Ding Liren as white open knight f3 we have d5 g3 g6 and now bishop g2 bishop g7 d4 uh, knight f6 and now both sides have the king's indian uh, setup however ding liren usually play in this position c4 that's what we have and now d takes on c4 is a possible very popular move uh, but caruana play c6 we have c takes on d5 c takes on d5 everything uh, very very symmetrical we have knight on c3 and castle by caruana uh, knight on e5 by ding liren e6 and here uh, castle is the most popular move uh, but Ding Liren play bishop on g5 uh, and here also black can play a queen on b6 uh, putting the pressure on d4 and also on b2 uh, and also avoiding this uh, this pin uh, however we have h6 so kicking the bishop and here bishop f4 and this position actually was reached by Ding Liren a couple of times uh, we have knight f on d7 now challenging all these um, pieces in the center uh, we have castle by Ding Liren knight on e5 uh, bishop takes on e5 and just after exchanging all the pieces we have this position knight on c6 was played and Ding Liren uh, had this position we have a uh, queen on d2 so he knows exactly what to do king on g7 and in the game he played in 2017 which he draw uh, he play f4 that was his uh, his idea f4 and after b6 knight b5 so playing before move bishop on a6 and then he just jumped knight on d6 that was a draw uh, but he had a very comfortable outpost for this knight uh, however here uh, he decided to um, get the different approach for the game and he played rook a on d1 uh, we have b6 in this position f4 and now bishop a6 so now knight on b5 is not possible we have rook f3 
Rug on C8 by Fabiano Caruana and here Ding Liren start to attack and he play G4. So he decided to attack on the on the king side and this rook uh, can be very very dangerous. For now it's supporting moves like F5, but it also can go to H3. Uh, and after moving f5, the queen uh, would be very dangerous together with this rook, uh, you know, looking at h6 pawn. Uh, this is why Fabiano Caruana play queen on h4. We have rook on g3 by Ding Liren, so defending the pawn. And here rook h8 probably should be played by Caruana, but he play h5. And actually Ding Liren had the chance here uh, to get, get the pawn. Uh, G takes on h5 and black actually can take this pawn uh, because they would go to very very unpleasant position so for example queen on h5 rook h3 queen f5 and now e4 d takes on e4 knight takes on e4 rook f on d8 attacking the queen but now knight d6 and this knight is in very very nice position attacking the queen with the tempo eventually uh, also attacking this rook for now uh, the knight is pinned if the queen is moved so uh, very interesting position but much much better for white so uh, Ding Liren could go for for this kind of position but he decided to play g5 now this queen look at this queen it's uh, it's locked there uh, but it's not so easy to actually trap this queen. Uh, we have rook f on d8 and now rook on h3 attacking the queen, queen g4, rook g3, queen h4 and now rook f1. Knight on e7, so bringing the knight to f5, which is a very, very nice outpost. The knight can't actually be attacked there, so uh, very, very nice. And here is the almost critical position what to play uh, as white uh, the best move is knight on d1 knight on d1 with the idea of trapping the queen because knight can go uh, to e3 can go to f2 uh, and control uh, g4 square very dangerous so for example knight on f5 uh, and now rook f on f3 uh, and knight on g3 is impossible to play. Uh, but anyway, you know, uh, rook on h3 is coming. Uh, then knight on f2 is coming. So uh, queen would be trapped. So if knight on g3, h takes on g3, queen g4, and knight e3, and uh, the queen is trapped anyway. So uh, because the, the knight also controls f5. So some similar variation uh, was possible, but Ding Liren decide for f5. And here is the really uh, critical position. Of course, uh, f6 is coming, which is very dangerous. But how to play by, by black? What would you play in this position? If you would like to play knight on f5, then congratulations. This is really the best move, but not because it looks like it looks the best. Uh, it's good because after rook on f4 trapping the queen, uh, black actually have very interesting continuation, d4. And now rook on h4 is losing uh, because d takes on c3. And look at this, the queen is under attack and the pawn is protected and uh, white has a problem so have to give back the queen uh, if queen goes to some like c1 then uh, c2 and the uh, rook on d1 is coming very dangerous and if queen on c2 then rook d2 and the queen is lost of course queen can move uh, but c2 and then promotion is coming and uh, black would just win the game so not this way uh, what about knight on b1? It looks pretty, pretty okay. However, black have very interesting move. Rook on c2. And now uh, this rook is hanging if the rook is taken, okay? So if rook takes uh, on h4, then rook on d2, knight on d2, and knight takes on h4. And black stands better here. So uh, this way, not really the best for white. 
Uh, but what are the other options? Knight on e4 also doesn't work for the same reason. So we have uh, rook on c2. And now if rook on h4, we have the same position. Exactly. Just, you know, a different order. So uh, this actually doesn't matter much. But if queen on c2, let's check this continuation. It's even worse. Because after queen on f4, rook on f3, a queen can actually escape. So queen e5. And now... White have not much to play. There is there there is not much to play here. If exchange, let's I, I will just show you uh, one of the continuations. If if just exchange the pieces and bishop on e2, then this is interesting because black has extra two pawn, two passed pawns, and actually the material is 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 equal, but it's definitely uh, winning for for black in much easier uh, game for black. So what else can be played here? This is interesting, but white have only one good move. Knight on d5, and it looks pretty crazy, but actually this knight protects the rook. So there are no tricks on c2, okay? You get it? So uh, it's pretty, pretty interesting that knight on d5 is still, you know, keep the white in the game. Uh, if e takes on d5, uh, then actually rook takes on h4, knight takes on h4, rook a3, uh, and now this can be very dangerous. Definitely white stands uh, much, much better. So uh, not e takes on d5. Now black have to play absolute the best move, knight on g3, okay? It doesn't look good, okay? But look at this, rook on h4. Knight e2 with check, king f2, and only now e takes on d5. And for the queen, black has the, the rook and the knight. Uh, and then, for example, a d3 is coming and uh, black have quite strong position. White don't have an uh, easy time here. Queen on b4 is the only move which gives some chances trying to get maybe maybe somehow this way uh, but black can block it with the with the rook on c5 and everything is fine with the black position and uh, it's not clear how white can proceed here so uh, definitely this is the way to go uh, for both sides so first here knight on d5 and then uh, only move is actually knight on g3. So both sides have to be very, very precise here. Quite crazy stuff. However, Caruana play g takes on f5. And it gives opportunity to Ding Liren to catch the queen. So we have rook on f4 catching the queen. And now d4, very similar, but now knight on b1. Uh, and now you ask, okay, rook on c2, it should work the same way. Actually not, because after rook on h4, rook on d2, knight on d2, black don't have this move, cannot take this rook. And white has extra rook, which is of course enough to win the game. So uh, not this way. This is why Fabiano Caruana play queen on f4. We have queen on f4, knight on g6, attacking the queen, queen d2. Now defending e2, uh, if the bishop takes e2 and then push d3, this pawn, uh, past pawn, would be very, very dangerous. Uh, but now it's the cost is this pawn. So we have knight on e5. And here Ding Liren play rook on a3, inviting Fabiano Caruana to uh, win the exchange. So if Caruana play knight on c4, then uh, queen on f4, knight e3, and yes, wins exchange. But now white have very comfortable game with extra minor piece. Uh, but also uh, with quite easy access to uh, to black position. So not really what uh, Fabiano Caruana want to happen. He want to complicate the game. So he played bishop on b5. Uh, we have rook on a7, now winning another pawn. And now knight on g4. And look at this. This knight become quite dangerous here. He's looking on f2, controlling f2, uh, watching around the, the king. So Ding Liren has have to be careful here. He play knight on a3, attacking the bishop, and where bishop can go now? Where would you play uh, with this black bishop? Caruana play bishop e2. 
pretty sneaky idea. And now, uh, if Ding Liren takes the bishop for free, uh, of course, it's something stink in that uh, in in this. So uh, he definitely check what is gonna happen. Uh, but if he takes it, then Rook C1. And now look at this. That is the problem. So uh, this knight is uh, pretty powerful. So uh, bishop on f1. And after knight on e3, there are some mating ideas. So uh, let's say knight on c4. Just exchange these pieces. And in this position, white stands slightly better because of this minor piece. But look at the position of the black uh, pawns. There are three connected pass pawns, so this is some some power, some counterplay for black, definitely. So uh, black would be still in the game, but of course Ding Liren is uh, too experienced for that kind of trap. So he play h3, kicking the knight, and if knight is kicked, then the bishop can be taken. Uh, but we have d3, so uh, Ding Liren wins another minor piece. We have h takes on g4, h takes on g4, and now knight on b1 uh, by Ding Liren. So uh, bringing extra blocker, uh, because these pawns uh, start to be uh, pretty dangerous. There are four, actually four connected passed pawns. So white have to uh, be ready for that. We have e5, so these pawns start to march. We have queen on e3 now rook on c5 defending because the pawn was attacked now we have knight on d2 blocking um, the pawn we have rook on d4 now uh, and queen on g3 a rook on c1 with check king h2 and now f4 attacking the queen uh, with tempo queen h4 now g3 again with tempo and now king h3 and look at the position of the king if uh, the bishop actually could somehow teleport to f5, the position of the white king would be very, very dangerous. The problem is white have the initiative now and checkmate is coming, okay? Queen on h6 and now checkmate is coming. So rook on d6 first by Fabiano Caruana. And now the easiest way for white would be something like bishop on e4 uh, followed by the queen on h7. It's pretty obvious uh, to play this. Uh, but Ding Liren tried to complicate the things a bit more. So he played bishop on d5. Now bishop can't be taken because of the mating ideas with the rook here. Okay, so that's not possible. Uh, but here Fabiano Caruana actually set up very, very sneaky trap. Rook on e6, and it looks pretty obvious what white should do. Just take the rook. This is, you know, free rook. But actually, that would be the huge blunder, because after taking the rook, the game is uh, it's just a draw. It's just a draw, because black would have the chance to play uh, rook on h1. And after king on g2, rook on h4, okay? And now uh, rook on f7, king on g6, rook on f6, and that would be just a draw. Uh, and if black tried to win, actually white would win that. So uh, can't push too hard. Okay, so king g5 is losing. And actually feel free to pause the video and find the checkmate in four. It's not difficult, it's fourth checkmate. So uh, not really difficult, but definitely you can, you know, practice... Uh, your tactical skills while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So knight e4 with check and now defending the rook, attacking the, the king and now a rook controls uh, these squares and the bishop controls this square so uh, king have only one move king h5 now bishop f7 again there is only one move king on g4 rook g6 there is again one move king f5 and we would have a checkmate so white would win so uh, you know black cannot push too much uh, in this position after rook on f6 they just have to uh, go back you know king g7 rook f7 and uh, just accept the draw. Uh, if they try other way, king h8, it also doesn't work. It's also losing because g6, rook h2, king g1, 
f3, but it's too slow. g7, king h7, and now knight f3. And it's winning for white. Okay, white's gonna win. Bishop f3, now just rook f3, and uh, promotion is coming, so this is just losing. Okay, taking the rook uh, and winning with the extra rook. So definitely very nice trap. However, black also have to be very careful to not push too much. Just take a draw in this position, of course, if the rook is taken. However, again, Ding Liren is uh, too experienced for that and he found the easiest way to the victory. He just play uh, rook on f7, sacrificing this rook. Uh, but this is obviously um, the easiest way to the victory. So we have uh, king on f7 and now queen on h7. King f8, the last trap. Of course, rook cannot be taken because the trap is still on the board, okay? So this skewer would be, would be deadly. Uh, for white, but uh, Ding Liren play queen on f5, attacking the queen, attacking the rook, and this time he can take this rook and of course win the game. So in this position, uh, Fabiano Caruana resign the game. Very interesting, very beautiful tactical game, and even uh, Fabiano Caruana lost the queen in exchange for the rook. He still fight, he still set up some uh, very sneaky traps and then try to, you know, uh, switch the score. But Ding Liren uh, did very well and won this game. However, as I said, uh, he lost the match, but in the Armageddon game and he got one point. Caruana got two points. And uh, if you like this game, press a like if for some reason you don't like it. But I don't know why. But feel free to press unlike. Leave the comment if you have some favorite games from Magnus Carlsen Invitational Tournament. A lot of beautiful games there. If you have some favorite, let me know in the comment. And if you don't want to miss any, press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.